Do you like goofs? Do you like yucks or hijinks maybe? Well, if you do, check out Stool Pigeon the Podcast from Coal Town Radio, an improv and storytelling comedy show. It's got a rotating cast of some of Austin's finest and most physically attractive improv comedians, making it all up on the spot, inspired by true stories from a different storyteller each week. The stories are true. The improv is made up. Stool Pigeon the Podcast. Real stories, real fun, real good, most of the time. Okay, uh, those were our specials for tonight. Uh, is this a special occasion of sorts? No, not really, but, well, well, maybe yes. It's it's a first date. Is that awkward? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. It's cute. Um, just some sparkling water, please. Uh, do you have any blackberry sparkling? We do. Coming right up. Oh, my God. I love blackberry sparkling. Me too. It's my new favorite. I've... I've really been trying new things this year. Oh, I can imagine. You have had a really rough patch and so much in the public eye. I can only imagine it's like, oh, I'm Jeff Bezos. Everybody knows my business. <laughs> it can certainly be exhausting and, and surreal, but I'm so glad you agreed to come out for a date. Oh, of course. Oh my gosh. I'm happy to get back out there myself. You know, after the past year, it's been so nice to actually go to get to go to a restaurant again. I really love this place. The chef was on Top Chef. He's a master of Northern Indian cuisine. <laughs> oh, cool. That's so weird because I have been really into Indian food lately. I even got a cookbook during quarantine. Really? Wow. That's interesting. What a coincidence. Have you made any recipes yet? <laughs> no, I haven't. But the book looks beautiful on my counter. <laughs> right, right. Okay, uh, here's your water. It's small batch, 365. Uh, ready to order? Um, I, I think we need another minute. Uh, of course, of course. Take your time. Hmm. To taking chances. To finding a prime friend. <laughs> yes, very good. Mm, that's very good. Spend less, smile more, right? <laughs> I am really loving this place. The lighting is nice and chill. I'm liking this music, too. It's jazzy. I swear I recognize it. Oh, I can't quite place it, though. Mm. <laughs> it's Dave Matthews under the table. <laughs> Get out! Wow, oh my god. I love me some DMB. I just got his greatest hits on CD. I hope you don't think I'm a dinosaur for still buying CDs. No, no, I think it's charming. <laughs> Old school, right? <laughs> right, oh yeah. All we need now is a little Mary Jane to really get the party going. Alexa, drown me in some wacky tobacco, you would ya? <laughs> oh yes. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are fun. Uh, okay, uh, I'm sorry, so wait, did... Did you want me to order some medicinals? I, I can get some here with my account. Oh, gosh, no. I was just kidding. <laughs> right. <laughs> me too. Yeah, very, yeah, very dazed and confused. All, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> uh, wait. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's McConaughey. He, he, he plays the stoner guy. Okay. Okay, okay. This is fucked up. You, you've been, oh my God. What? I, I haven't looked at anything. <laughs> Blackberry sparkling? Indian food? Dave Matthews? I just watched Dazed and Confused last week on Amazon Prime. You've totally been spying on my account. No, I would never. Oh, please. I don't care if you're a billionaire, you're a creep. I am out of here. Are y'all ready to order? <sighs> We're done, shut it down, shut it all down. She found out, damn it, all of them find out. All right, everybody, that's it. Strike the sets, we're closing up. Alexa, get me a pint of Haagen-Dazs and 
Cue up, pretty woman. I'll be home in 20. Hi guys, Katie Stone here. I am a copywriter and comedian living with a mood disorder in Los Angeles, California. I am Lane Ingram, comedy performer and therapist here in Austin, Texas. And we are the hosts of Yeah But Are You Happy, a weekly podcast talking about the intersection of mental health and creativity. We have a lot of fun discussing really heavy topics in a way that is fun and accessible to our audience. And we're really excited by the community we've collected to be asking us questions and interacting every week. Check us out here on Cold Town Radio every week and at twitch.tv slash coldtowntv every Wednesday. See you guys soon. Simon, Lydia, you will love Romeo and Juliet. I did see it hither on opening night. Twas most wondrous. We cannot wait. I had no idea thou wert such a fan, Edmund. Uh. Oh, love, fights, suicide. What's not to like? Soft, don't ruin the entire plot. The bard doth reveal what I have said within the first five minutes of performance. Thou art not the bard, are you, Edmund? Thou must be more careful. I still cannot believe thou spoiled Oedipus Rex for me. I thought everyone already knew what happened. I don't know how else to describe Thomas except as a gentleman with an Oedipus complex. What's this about Thomas? Watch Oedipus Rex before hearing this gossip, lest it be spoiled for thee. Come on, thou wasn't going to watch Oedipus Rex anyway. It's been out for over 2,000 years. Oh, quiet. Shh, it's starting. Here comes the furious Tybalt, back again. This is my favorite part. Romeo, away, be gone. Romeo's in trouble now. Stand not amazed. The prince will doom thee death. Might as well stay there and let the prince slay thee, Romeo. Simon, what do you have against poor Romeo? I'm rooting for him. As Edmund alluded to earlier, this will not have a happy end. He may as well save Juliet and all of us the time and let the prince do the deed he will later perform himself. You think Romeo's going to kill himself? Weren't you listening? A pair of star-crossed lovers take their life? It was part of the prologue. I missed that part. Juliet's going to kill herself too. Let's go, children. I had no idea this place was such a bad influence for the youth. For never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. What a heartbreaking ending. I thought thou would like it, Lydia. Come, I want to queue up to speak with Shakespeare. Heartbreaking, but not unexpected, of course. It was a great play. I only wish I came in not knowing whether it end in joy or defeat. Thou shouldst already have known it was a tragedy. That's why the theatre has flown a black flag today. Why, oh, thanks for pointing that out. I must avert my eyes when I come see Julius Caesar next week. Surely thou dost not expect the tragedy of Julius Caesar to be joyful. I know not to expect it now. If not me, surely the town crier made mention of all I have told you. Oh, I avoid them altogether. They always tell too much in their advertisement. We're next in line. Mr. Shakespeare, sir, it is an honor to meet you. I waited hours to see the premieres of Henry IV, part one and part two, and have enjoyed them both greatly. I'm pleased to meet such fans. I hope you will enjoy the upcoming Henry V. I cannot wait to see Henry beating the French in the war. How are you privy to such information, good sir? Don't upset William Shakespeare, Edmund. This is what I know about Henry V from history. His victories at Agincourt were famous. I do not appreciate 
people going about, leaking the parts of the plot out. Keep this to thyself. Hear ye, hear ye! This just in! Henry V is late! Henry battles France and wins! (laughs) 